When we think of cholesterol, it's easy to picture an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other with good cholesterol and bad cholesterol battling for control of our bodies. But the good versus bad narrative is outdated and is a misrepresentation of the role cholesterol plays in our health. If you didn't know, cholesterol is a type of waxy substance known as a lipid and only comes from animal-based foods. But did you also know that our liver makes most of our cholesterol and only about 25% of what circulates in our bodies comes from what we eat? The amount of cholesterol we absorb from our diet depends on several factors like the food itself, our state of health, and even our genetics. As much as we demonize cholesterol, it's actually good for quite a few things. Cholesterol helps create our cell membranes and keeps them fluid. It's part of the coating that protects our nerves. It's the precursor to bile salts, which our body uses to break down fats. And cholesterol plays an important role in the production of vitamin D. When looking at cholesterol, we're talking about two different groups. LDL, which is labeled as bad, and HDL often heralded as good and deservingly so. A high level of LDL has long been considered a risk factor for heart attacks and other cardiovascular concerns, but more recent research shows that some of the population with elevated LDL might not have anything to be afraid of. Believe it or not, when examining studies of people ages 60 and older, high LDL levels are actually linked to longevity. Mind blow. You see, LDL particles come in two different sizes small dense particles and large buoyant particles. The small dense particles are the ones to be concerned about. Doing some simple math with your cholesterol numbers can help you understand if there's a suggestion of insulin resistance and how risky the LDL level actually is. For example, you can take your triglycerides and divide it by the amount of HDL. If the number is above 1.5, that's a sign there could be some insulin resistance, which actually signals the liver to shift towards producing more dangerous, small, dense particles. If you have high LDL, you might be prescribed a statin to control your body's production of cholesterol. And while these can be helpful in certain circumstances, it's important to look at the entire picture before routinely ingesting something that can impact your body in ways that you probably can't even imagine. When it comes to your cholesterol, here's what an optimal panel looks like. Total cholesterol below 180 milligrams per deciliter, LDL under 70 milligrams per deciliter, HDL over 60 milligrams per deciliter, and triglycerides under 100 milligrams per deciliter. If you're in pursuit of an optimal cholesterol panel, avoiding sugar and ultra processed foods is part of the ideal solution to get you there. Also, combating oxidative stress and inflammation should be another part of your dietary strategy to improve your metabolic health. Foods rich in antioxidants like blueberries, artichokes, and even dark chocolate will help neutralize free radicals and improve your cellular health. Look, we're all consistently looking for ways to improve our health, and there's a ton of conflicting information out there. For more clarity on this topic, you should visit the link in the description of this video for the full length blog post. After reading the article, because I know you will, hopefully you'll see that paying more attention to the quality of your food than the quantity of your cholesterol can be an extremely beneficial approach as you continue to pursue optimal metabolic health. See you in the next video.